Thanks for joining us. I'm Jesse Klein, and these are the Basement Tapes. As you can see, like millions of Canadians, I've moved out of the office and into my basement. Like many others, I've turned to video conferencing as a means of staying in touch with my friends, family, and colleagues. And although it dragged its feet for quite some time, the House of Commons has now gone virtual as well. On Tuesday, the full house convened for the first time over Zoom. Bravo, welcome to the 21st century. But Zoom has come under increased scrutiny about its substandard security and lax privacy controls. The company outright lied about using end-to-end -end encryption. We learned that it has access to decryption keys, meaning it can potentially snoop on conversations. A team at the University of Toronto found that the software was sometimes sending encryption keys through servers located in communist China, even if none of the participants in the call were from that country. And the term Zoom bombing has entered the lexicon, with many meetings being spied on or actively disrupted by people spouting racism and displaying Nazi imagery. We certainly don't want Parliament to descend into chaos. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, it is... Down with the tar sands. No pipelines without consent. No tankers off the BC coast. Down with the tar sands. No tankers off the coast. No Stop trying to ruin the economy, you commie. You're just a shill for big oil, you redneck. You're obviously being paid by the foreign environmental lobby. Why don't you go ride your bike down to Whole Foods to buy some more kale, you hippie? Um. Another video conferencing platform that's seen a sharp increase in popularity is Jitsi. While it's run by a company called 8x8, which offers free and paid plans, it's also open source, meaning anyone can run a Jitsi server and anyone with enough knowledge can audit its source code to figure out exactly how it works and whether there are any potential security vulnerabilities. Even if you've never heard of open source, chances are you're running it as it has spurred the Internet of Things revolution, powering everything from smartphones to web servers, home automation systems and smart TVs by allowing companies to easily write software for new devices without reinventing the wheel each time. The advantage of governments selecting open systems like Jitsi instead of proprietary ones like Zoom is that it would allow it to run all its systems in-house instead of relying on foreign companies to transmit and store data. It would also give government the ability to conduct security audits of all its systems, which is much easier to do when you can see the code that a software package is built with rather than trying to figure out how a black box works without being able to open it up. And while there would be an initial cost to purchasing the necessary hardware and ensuring the government has the proper expertise to implement and maintain it, there would be significant savings for taxpayers in the long run, as the government would be able to stop paying for costly software licenses. Security researchers have warned the government that Zoom is a privacy disaster waiting to happen. In order to protect our critical IT infrastructure from foreign interference and espionage, we need to seriously look at running these systems in Canada with software retrust. Finding open source solutions is the best way to go about doing that. Otherwise, Parliament could devolve into this. I wanted to ask the Prime Minister a question about the... Hey, we don't do in-person interruptions anymore. 2011 called. They want their loony activists back. 